All right, hello there, Facebook. This is Jeremy Levitt. Unfortunately, take number two for this. If you got stuck with the last one with bad audio, I apologize. Hopefully, this one is better. I'm even going to mute the computer sound here. So this is a new segment I'm putting together. I've been wanting to put it together for a while. Yesterday was the first day of school for my fourth grader and my kindergartner. So I figured what better time than now to start my educational piece for you, the home buyer. We're going to call it the happy home buyer. The whole point is I want to come in here every Tuesday or at least as many Tuesdays as I can and just give you some tidbit of knowledge from an insider that should help make your home buying process just that little bit easier. I watch documentaries, other info pieces just because I like to consume information versus like fiction and I'm just... I'm always amazed at how little I know about other topics um, and the insiders just know so much. So I'm going to share with you things that you may know, things you may not have known, and I'm definitely going to be giving you some information on the backside of mortgages and real estate that will make your entire process less expensive and a little bit easier for you to deal with. I'm going to jump right on in today with today's topic, which is what is a pre-qualification really? Let me transition over to that. And here I've got an example of what the Arizona prequalification looks like. Not all states have one. Arizona has this nice, big, fancy one. Here's what it really means. A prequalification, which your lender or your realtor, if you're working with a realtor, they're going to say, before you get into my car, you need to go get your prequalification. If they haven't said that, pretend they did and do it anyway. If you're not paying cash for a home and you're going to rely on a banker, to fund a loan for you to buy that home, make sure you start with the banker first. That way, if there's going to be any hiccups, you deal with them. Whether you're anticipating hiccups or not, now's the time to deal with it, not once you've already found a home. So that's the whole purpose of the prequalification. You probably already knew that, though. Here's how the actual prequalification works. It starts when you actually fill out the lender's application. So you've got to go to the lender's website, mine in this case, jjlevitt.com, click on the Apply Now tab. Ours is simple. It's all online answer the questions, it fills out our application. That goes into our system. We literally look at the information you input there. You could have put whatever you want there. You could put that you made a million dollars a year, that you've got a million dollars in the bank. You can put whatever you want in the application. The first time we look at it, we're going to be looking at just the information you input there. That's going to give us the you know 3,000 foot view of your scenario to help us kind of guide you from there. If it's a super simple scenario, you're just paid hourly and your money's already in the bank for your down payment, you have no credit issues, it's going to be easy for us to say, hey, we need pay stubs, bank statements, and you know we'll be able to issue your pre-qualification. The more complicated your situation gets from there, the more complicated the entire pre-qualification piece works. I just mentioned credit, though. One of the big pieces is authorizing the lender to pull your credit at this stage. Some people are leery about having the lender pull their credit, which I understand. You don't want a bunch of people pulling your credit. You don't want a bunch of hits. You don't want these things. But if you're serious about looking at a home, now's the time to have a mortgage banker pull your credit so they can look at it from a mortgage banker's perspective and see if there's going to be any problems, see if there's anything you need to work on. The more time we have to work on any potential credit hurdles, the better for both of us. Trust me. So let's say I've looked at your application. I've looked at your credit. I've decided, hey, this is something that we can do. We can finance you for the amount you want. Now's where I'm going to ask you for some documentation. Depending on how complicated your scenario is, it could be just a little bit of documentation like pay stubs and bank statements, and it could be pay stubs, bank statements, tax returns, business tax returns, K1s, like everything under the sun. Doing that now or doing it later isn't going to change the amount of paperwork. So getting the paperwork out of the way early is the best thing you can do. First off, the work's done. You're going to have to do the work anyway. You might as well knock it out. I could find 15 quotes on why procrastination is not good. I don't have a good one for you, though, but don't procrastinate. Get the paperwork in early, as in before you've even started looking for homes. That way, as a lender, I can look at the paperwork and say, hey, does it match exactly what you inputted on the application, or are there some variances? If there's variances, are they okay, or do they cause us to have to go to plan B? That's the whole point of it. You give me your version of, of what your scenario looks like on the application, then you send me your documentation and I check to see if your version is the same as what your documentation says, and if they are, you're good to go for that pre-qualification. What usually happens is folks fill out the application with what they can think of off the top of their head. When I look at their documentation, there's just a slight variation. For most people, 
that doesn't impact their prequalification. But every now and then that slight variation means they don't have quite enough income to qualify for what they want, or maybe they don't have quite enough assets, or maybe they have some unique um, debts that, you know, from a mortgage perspective, we're going to have a bit of a problem with. So when we're looking at it, we're looking at it, does your scenario fit the guideline for the amount you want? It's not like we're trying to pick apart your scenario or judge anything that you're doing. We're just trying to decide early on, are you going to be able to get the loan that you want for the loan amount that you want? That kind of brings me to the second piece. Pre-qualification, if you didn't already know, was getting your application and your documents in. But really, you should be taking the time right now to have that, that real important talk with yourself and with any of the other decision makers in your family on exactly how much money you're willing to spend, both on a monthly basis as well as a total out-of-pocket, like this is how much money i got to write the check for at closing. Decide that before you start going looking at homes because that is going to impact how quickly you move on a home. So the realtor is going to work with you on deciding where you want to buy, what features the home has to be, all those pieces. But you and I and the decision makers in your family should have that really upfront conversation of exactly how much do you want to spend. That way, if you're bumped up against that maximum, you can make a quick decision of, hey, we've decided we'll spend that much. Let's write that offer. Right now in a lot of areas, it's what we call a seller's market. It means that the really nice homes are going quickly. So you as a buyer are going to have to make a decision quickly on the really nice homes or you're going to get stuck with the homes that nobody else wants to write offers on. So part of that is making that commitment to yourself on the budget. So be, you know, be realistic. Say, you know, if you've been renting for $1,200 a month and you want to keep the payment at $1,200, that's good information to know. But if you're not sure where you want to push it, now's the time to decide what you want that number to be, not when you're contemplating making an offer on a home. Because if you make that offer on the home, a few hours late, a couple of days late, whatever it is, the home might be gone. So that's kind of pointless and you don't want to run into that headache. So pre-qualification, fairly simple. Fill out the application, get your documents in, and make those firm commitments to yourself and the other people that are making the decision in your family on how much money you want to spend. That's really all it is. If you need any help with it, you give me a call. My telephone number is down there somewhere, 480-744-6040. Watch me here on Tuesdays. I'll give you some more insider information on these things. We're going to keep them nice and simple up front, but then I'm going to let you know all about the lending side, all about the real estate side, things that you can that you need to know to make it super easy for you. And I'm going to do my best to make it so you can save a little bit of money on things like shopping me. So have a great day. I'll talk to you soon.